What is going on guys? Welcome to episode 3 of my SnowRunner mod tutorial. Uh, today we are going to focus, we're going to step away from Blender and, for this episode and focus on the file for structures and folder structures that SnowRunner requires for mods to work. Now, thankfully the, de the developers of the game um, have included a entire template on how to set up your folders. I don't... I, I don't particularly follow their exact template. However, I do use most of it. Um, and it's still a good basis for how to set up your folders. Um, I just do things slightly different in how I name them. Uh, it just makes a little more sense to me the way I name it, but we'll get into that a little later. First things first, wherever you have the game installed is where you're going to find that template. So wherever you have your Epic Games installed, we'll go into SnowRunner this English US folder into media and you'll see mod templates. So in mod templates, we have this mod scout and this is what we're going to copy. We're going to copy this entire folder. This is, this has an entire directory of all the files needed for their scout, um, their mod scout it's like a tuz 166 in the game which it is av available as a regular vanilla vehicle but they gave us all of the files to rebuild that vehicle from scratch in order as a learning tool on how to make a mod so what we're going to do is we're going to go into documents and we're going to find my games snow runner media and you should have a mods folder in here if not, you may have to create it. But you should have a mods folder, and this is going to show you all the mods that you have installed right now. So all I'm going to do is paste that folder into here. That's going to create the mod scout folder, and we're going to rename this tutorial. So now in here we have the next layer of folders and there are multiple layers to all these folders so classes meshes we don't need the text that's if you're going to do different translations of your menu items and your descriptions so they gave us a russian and an english um i'm not bilingual i don't know any other languages so mine are all in english so we can get rid of the text folder these are all the textures and the UI, which is for the store, the pictures. So classes. Classes are all of the XML programming files that we are going to need in order to make this truck. Customization presets are all the colors. So that is when you go into the garage and you tab over a couple times, you have all the different color options to change the color of the truck. Those are stored in this XML file. Engines. Those are all the engines for this truck. Gearboxes will be the gearboxes available to this truck. Suspensions. The truck itself. And then the tuning folder within that is all of the add-ons and then winches so in here we have all the different add-ons so you see we got a snorkel a roof rack some front bumper rear bumper and their diff lock and that's in this tuning folder but what i usually do is i end up creating a new folder and i just call it add-ons if I could type. And I'll put all my add-ons into it, their own folder. So I know these are the ones that I made. 
most of my other mods, I don't even have the tuning folder anymore because I've just replaced everything. It's all 100% um, my own stuff. For the moment, we need to kind of keep this tuning folder just because there's a lot of stuff inside this main truck XML file that are going to refer back to that. So we kind of have to leave that for the moment, but we'll get into how to edit and change everything so we can then eliminate that folder because we're making our own truck and we're not going to be using all of the template mod scout stuff that comes with it. However, at the moment, we, we do need to leave that there. So coming back in the meshes folder, trucks, the FBX is the actual 3D model that we export out of Blender. And the XML file that accompanies it is the programming to tell the game engine which textures to apply to that 3D model. So this is like the set of instructions that tells it what to do um, and what colors to make that. Then you also have in the tuning, it's every single add-on has the same format. You have the 3D mesh and then the instructions on which texture to use with that mesh. So each one has to be named identical. The XML and the FBX have to match for every one. Same here, they both have to match. Arrows are for if you have moving gauges. Um, that'll be a further episode, but just to explain what's in there. These are the actual gauge needles that move, and each one has its own 3D model, and again, a texture file that tells it where to what to use. So if we go back, textures, fairly self-explanatory. I'm not positive what models are, though, with these cans and cargo fasteners. Um, but then again, I've never fully just exported the template and loaded it in the game and tried to figure out exactly what all this stuff is. I just know models, I don't use it. And my, my mods, I don't even have that folder. So eventually we will end up deleting that folder. So I'm not positive exactly what the models are. Um, my mods don't use that folder. So I usually end up deleting that. Um, trucks is literally all of the textures that go along with the truck. However, again, they have all the add-ons in the main truck folder. I typically have a folder specifically just for add-ons within there. I'll put my wheels in with the trucks most of the time, but the add-ons end up going into their own folder. So I'll create a folder there for add-ons. So the big thing that we need to start doing is editing this main truck XML file. When you first open it, I use Notepad++ to edit my XML files. You can use Notepad itself, but Notepad++ is actually set up for editing code like this. Um, there is, if you just used regular Notepad, it ends up um, not putting this nice indentation format when you select something, it's going to automatically tell you where the end of your, your segments are. 
you can collapse segments, you can do better searching and find and replace, uh, which we will end up using. So it's a free program. Um, I strongly recommend downloading it. But this is literally the main programming for the truck. Every single bit in part. Um, there's a lot to cover in here. I could spend an entire two episodes just trying to explain what all these different things are. And we will need to go through quite a bit of it. But there are things in here for our basic truck that we're just not going to need. So we'll start at the top and we'll just start eliminating the things that I know we don't need for the basic truck. Things that absolutely have to be done are this first section here. These have to stay. Your winch, obviously you could delete it and just not have a winch, but it's obvious it would be much better if you did. Um, wheels are a mandatory. You have to have the wheels in here. Otherwise, the truck has nothing to drive on and the game engine is programmed to, hey, wh what are the wheels? Where, where are they? And whatnot. So this is literally each individual wheel, left, right, front, and rear. Uh, the suspension socket, the steering rack. We don't have a steering rack because we didn't put any steering bones in. So this is something we don't need. So we're going to delete this. If you were doing a more advanced truck that does have a steering rack that moves left to right when you turn, you would keep this in here and name everything appropriately. Uh, steam is just where the radiator is. Uh, sounds. These are all sound, sound, sound. More sounds. Shakers. We don't have any shakers. This is to make the exhaust bounce up and down when you first start the truck. We don't have a shaker bone, so we can delete that. These are your drive shafts. We will be using those. The occlusion map is the shadow. There's your gearbox. Um, fuel tank damage. The exhaust origin where the smoke comes out. Engine socket we need. The driver animation and where he's sitting within the truck. Dashboard gauges. Uh, different damage areas. We need those. Compatible wheels. These are the wheels that are compatible with the truck. If you wanted to add different wheels from a larger truck, this is where you would put them. The camera cockpit. So this is for first person view. View position is where the camera is facing when you're in first person. Mirrors. Uh, I know we don't have a... Oh, we do have a center mirror in there. So we'll leave that. Um, the bones for the front and rear axles. The actual model name is right here. And I'm going to rename that right now because I know later we are going to change the name within the folders. So I'm going to just actually change that right now while I'm here. Um, we have a bunch of collisions with things and it's all stuff that pertains to that exact model. So there was a lot of, you have collisions for the mirrors that require separate bones. You have the tent, this like a um, canvas top over the back of it. And we don't need any of this because we don't have any of these bones. So we're going to scroll way down to the end here, delete that. And then we're going to double check where things close. So this body closes with this, this body closes with this, this body does not have a closing, so we'll delete that. Okay, so this closes here, this closes here, 
and we're good. That's one of the advantages of using Notepad++ is you can click on the upper part and it tells you where the lower part is so you can make sure there's a match and the, the coding closes correctly. Model attachments, these are all the lights. I'll typically leave these for now. They're going to look really weird in the game because they'll be floating and nothing's going to line up, but we can change all that later. So we have the headlights. This is the landmark when you're on the mini-map or when you're on your pull-up your map. This is the, the landmark that pulls up. Um, more headlight data. Country. If you want to unlock your truck and have it available in both the U.S. and Russia at the same time, we just leave that blank. This is the price of the truck. These are where your winch sockets are. This is the description of the truck in the game menu. So we are going to go 1990s. Tutorial. Truck. And the UI name is going to be Edge Works Tutorial. So that is the name of the truck as it appears in the store, and this is the description of that truck. You can type as much as you want within the description. Um, it'll word wrap. Don't worry about it. You can just keep going. Um, you can also put in enter, you know, carriage returns and move the line down. These are the different default camera positions within um, the garage. I usually don't mess with these. I haven't really tried to play with them. Most of them are usually pretty good um, position wise for almost any truck. Then we have the crane sockets and then we have our add-on sockets. So I'll put in, I like to occasionally put in a few spaces. Um, it doesn't hurt anything and it allows me to find things easier. These are literally every part that you can take on and put off. It has to have a socket as far as where it installs. So that's all the add-on sockets. Then you have the closing game data and the closing truck that match all the way up at the top here, this truck. And then there's a game data somewhere a little further down. So that is the basics of the, XM, the main truck XML file. Now, one big thing we need to do is anything that says bone cabin CDT or bone chassis CDT, we don't have those bones in our mesh file. We have bone body CDT. So what I'll do is find bone cabin underscore CDT. And we want to place bone cabin CDT with bone body CDT. So replace all. And that just went through the entire, the entire thing and found any instance of bone, cha bone cabin CDT and replaced it with bone body. So we want to do the same thing with bone chassis because I know that is also there. So we'll replace all those as well. If you don't do that, there are going to be a lot of errors that pop up and the truck most likely will not convert. Another thing we need to do is near the bottom. Okay, this truck does not have any. Um, I was double checking for any inverse kinetics or IK um, bone movement. And those will usually put, be put in after the add-on sockets and possibly even after game data. But this, this template doesn't have any, so that's not an issue. So we will save this. And 
what I'm going to do is actually delete all these add-on sockets because that's just going to add on a bunch of parts that don't fit our truck. So we'll delete those. We'll save again. And now we'll open up Blender. Go into the tutorial. We have the main truck all selected. What I'll do is still select all, apply all transforms to make sure Okay, apparently it decided to move my CDT that I so carefully placed when I decided to apply all transforms. So we're going to do this again, apply all transforms. I'm not positive why it did that, but it did it. So let's make sure it's not... It's not square that way either. It decided to center it. Okay, so we've got the CDT. If all transforms is not applied and something is out of whack the game can it doesn't always but it can give errors so it's always best to have everything pretty much where you want it and then when you apply all transforms it's going to reset this back to zero so the scale has to be 1.0 Rotations are in zero, and location is here. Rotation, there is a, a, it's kind of a weird thing where if it's, the model is turned 90 degrees, and you don't apply the rotation, then the snow affects it differently for the snow buildup. I still don't fully understand that, and I'm still trying to learn how to do that. Um, for now, Everything seems to work okay for me just by applying all transforms and making every making sure everything is at zero. So we'll select all again and it's grabbing everything except for the front bumpers because remember the front bumper and rear bumper because remember those are add-ons that are not part of the truck and will be swapped out. If I were to put them in now, they will be permanently attached to the truck and you wouldn't be able to remove them. What I'm going to do now is export as an FBX. We're going to navigate to my games, SnowRunner, Media, Mods, Tutorial, Meshes, Trucks, and we're going to over. We're actually going to just go with Tutorial.FBX. That's the name that we're looking for um, and that's the name that I put into this XML file that has to match um, where is it physics model so this name right here needs to match the name of the mesh file so we only want to we don't want to do all of these object types we want to limit to the selected objects so we're not grabbing those and we only want the armature and I'm going to hold down shift and mesh so we only want the armatures and mesh we don't care about the rest of that stuff and then a good thing to do when you're using blender is apply the experimental transforms it solves a lot of issues that you may have with other things, um, especially with, for some reason, things like the first person view 
if you don't have the experimental transform applied, it'll do really weird things where the driver's hands will appear outside of the truck instead of inside of the truck. Um, so applying that is just a good habit to get into anytime you export anything out of Blender. So we're going to export that. And we are going to go back into our folder. We're going to go back to the meshes, trucks, and we are going to delete this. And remember I said before, every single mesh file, every FBX needs a matching XML file. So what I do is I will copy. Actually, I don't need to copy that. We just need to rename it. So we rename this tutorial. Now inside of here, like I had mentioned, is the instructions for every texture. At the moment, we don't have any textures. We don't have we haven't even named any of the parts on the truck with a texture. We haven't applied any textures. We haven't UV mapped anything. We have done nothing in terms of textures and that does not matter at this moment all the game cares about is that there's an xml file that matches that and it'll allow the game to read the mesh properly it's just a simple check that it does that it says hey um i need to know what textures to use it doesn't matter if it can't use those textures it just wants the instruction list to be able to use those textures. So we will go with this. And now we can actually go into the game. Okay, after a quick edit, save you all the loading screens. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm working on mods is I will set my I will set my video to be windowed rather than in um, rather than being full screen and I have a 4k monitor that's rather large so I can actually do this in 1920 by 1080 have it take up a quarter of the screen that way there I can still come back to notepad or I can come back to my folders and still be able to get to things so we'll come back out of here we have to go into the mod browser and if we go to more to if you're using a controller it's going to be if you're using an Xbox controller it'll be Y um, but for keyboard and mouse, it's spacebar. And we're going to press enter to select map and enter to select the summer proving grounds. Okay, so in here, we're going to go to mod manager. And you should see, obviously I have a, a lot of mods that I've created. But within the list, you should see your mod, and it'll say not convert. So what we're going to do is click convert, and it is going to go through and convert all of the meshes and all of the textures into a, an encrypted file format that only the game can read. That helps prevent other people from stealing your mod off of mod.io when you go to upload it to be able to use it. This may take a while depending on the speed of your computer. Um, I'm just gonna edit out the remainder and we'll skip to it being finished. Okay, it's done converting. It brings this menu back up and you can see that it does say converted now. We can close this menu go to create and this is every truck that's in the game including all of your mods um, so we will 
scroll down and try to find the tutorial spot, which I think is actually right here, because it's under Mod Scout. So Mod Scout tutorial tutorial truck, and it actually follows wherever you click. We could remove the. Chevy pickup. Sometimes when they first come in, if the truck is a little too long, it'll clip into the front of that Chevy truck and then when you actually add it, it everything just explodes because the two trucks are clipping through each other. So I'll usually either take away the Chevy pickup or I will um, just click to the side of it. But click add. So we need to click on it to be able to get into it. Otherwise, if you don't, you won't have access to pretty much anything. Um, and the truck will look a little weird because the suspension doesn't settle. It's kind of interesting, and I'll show you that later on. So we clicked on it, click done. And as you can see, our model shows up in the game. There's a lot wrong with it. Um, the front suspension is clipping through the ground. Um, the rear suspension is on the ground, so the whole model needs to move up within space. The wheels are obviously not in the right place, but that's because the positioning in here, in the XML file, is set for that default, um, that default sample truck. So these positions are all incorrect. 